Okay, much better light. Okay, much better light. This is 2 Chronicles, and I'm going to start with 16 and verse 7. And I'm going to give you an account of two Israelite kings and how one of them was remained in the right spirit and how one of them went off. And they had two different outcomes, right? This is 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 7. Let me bring this out real quick. And it says, And at that time, Hanani the seer came to King Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, because thou has relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy power, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a large host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. So here it is. This was a prophet by the name of Hanani. He was actually going to an Israelite king by the name of Asa in the book of 2 Chronicles, the 16th chapter, letting him know that because he relied on the powers that be of that day, because he relied on the dominant society that we were held captive in, that, hey, this judgment wasn't going to befall him, right? Going on, it says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. <laughs> so here it is. There was a prophet that went to an Israelite king Asa letting him know, hey, you have been trusted in the most high God of Israel. Right? Rather, you trusted in the shadow of Egypt. It says that in Isaiah 30. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and trust in Pharaoh. Right? You trust in the so-called white man and you trust in the dominant society. You look at their economical power. You look at their standing military. And you look at their positions. You look at their wise men. You look at their medical industry. And you feel like they have the ability to actually resolve your concerns, right? You don't look at the creator, you look at rather his creatures, right? Jumping right back to 2 Corinthians 6 and 7, it says, and this is um, the seer speaking to King Asa. It said, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro forth throughout the earth and show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. This is a prophet giving him a message, right? Don't get mad at the messenger, right? Because a prophet is just sent out to deliver a message, right? And this is exactly what Hanani was doing. But what was the reaction of King Asa? It says, Then Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was enraged with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. Right? Let me get this in the book of Galatians. Let me get this in the book of Galatians 4 and 16. Right? Because this is the same sentiments of a lot of the, our people in this time. We come with the message from the Bible, thus says the Lord, but they take issue with us. Right? Let me get this in the book of Galatians. And let me get it quickly. with me. All right, this is the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 16 and it reads, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Right? Because hey, this seer or this prophet by the name of Hanani, he told King Asa that you haven't trusted in the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But rather, you've trusted in the king of Syria. You see that? Jumping right back to 2 Chronicles, the 16th chapter. Right? And it says, Then 
Asa was wroth with the seer and put him in a prison house, for he was enraged with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the same people at that time. And behold, the acts of Asa first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah of Israel. And Asa in his thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease, he sought not the Lord, but to the physicians. Right? Let me go ahead and bring that out in Isaiah 30. I quoted it earlier, but let me bring it out. Right? When King Asa had that condition in his foot, probably gout, where his legs started to rot away, hey, he didn't seek the Holy One of Israel. Right? But rather, he seek the physician. Right? Let me bring this out in the book of Isaiah chapter 30. I'm shorthanded today, so for y'all patience. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 30, and I'm going to start with one. I'm going to jump to Isaiah 31 2. It says, Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin unto sin. That's what iniquity is. That walk to go down to Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. It said, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be to your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Because that's what's happening right now. This is why the emergency rooms are full. Because rather than come to a prophet, rather than getting the word, rather than seek alternative methods of healing like the herbs that the Most High put for our good, no, they go straight down to Egypt. They don't even seek the Holy One of Israel. They don't seek his servants. They are totally locked into the mind of being Egyptians. They are confederate with this place. They are joined into their oppressors. They are American through and through, so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. Right, wherever they're scattered, they are not Israelites in name or in deed. So, it's only natural that they're going to go down to Egypt and be caught up by the wiles of the devil, right? It says in 2 Chronicles 16 and 7, 16 verse 12, it says, In Asa, Second Chronicles 16 and 12, and it said, and Asa in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. Fourteen years in his reign he died because when he was confronted with the disease, it says he sought not the Lord, but to the physicians. Right, this is the sentiments of two thirds of our people in this time as well. Right, let me bring this out in the book of Isaiah, uh, the 31st chapter. And it reads Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not into the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. <laughs> it said, Let he, he also is wise and will bring evil and he will not call back his words but he will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity right so even if you think that you're going to help the israelites in this time that want to go against their power that want to rebel against their power that want to go to the dominant society it's saying those in the dominant society that even offer the help y'all going to get caught up as well why? Because the Most High demands that his people be in the need or be destroyed. You're going to have to get right or be destroyed. Right? Let me bring out this account of a righteous king because we just heard of a wicked king, Asa. Even when he was in his prominence, he at one point believed in the Most High power. And this is why he actually had a reign, what, 13, 14 years. But towards the end of his reign, similar to King Solomon, you know, he started to conform. He started to lose his integrity. 
and it cost him his life. When he was confronted with that plague, he trusted in the physicians. He didn't cry out to the Most High, right? Let me bring out this account real quick in the book of Kings, right? Because we are bringing forth the account of Kings. Even in the book of Chronicles, it referenced King Asa being mentioned in the book of uh, Kings, right? So this is 2 Kings, the 20th chapter. Let me get it real quick. This is 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. And it says, In those days Hezekiah was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord Power, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So here's a prophet, right? Just like Hananiah went to King Asa, and he actually prophesied that, hey, you're going to fall. Your kingdom is going to fall because you're trusting in the powers that be, the king of Syria. You're not trusting in the most high of Israel. And what did he do? He threw the prophet in jail and still ended up dying and further oppressed the people as well. Why? Because he got mad at the messenger. Right here, Isaiah went to Hezekiah in 2 Kings 20 and 1. And now let's see how Hezekiah responds to the prophet, right? It said in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord power, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Right? So when he was confronted with getting this bad news to get his house in order, right? To get to prepare your spirit, you know, he didn't get mad at the messenger, but rather he received the message in humility and he went to cry out to the Most High. It said in 2 Kings 20 and 2, then he turned and faced the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, after Isaiah was gone, out in the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus said the Lord God, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears, <laughs> before I will heal thee. And on the third day shall thou go into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of the figs. And they did take and laid it on the boil. And he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, which shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go into the house of the Lord on the third day. And Isaiah said unto him, the sign shall thou have of the Lord that the Lord will do what will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the saddle go forward 10 degrees or back 10 degrees? And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees, but let the shadow return back 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backwards, by which it had gone down on the down of Hazaz. Right? So that was a sign that was given to Hezekiah to know that, hey, for being of a contrite, broken spirit, hey, the Most High actually answer unto him right let me get this real quick in the book of uh, psalms the 34th chapter and the 18th verse right this is psalms chapter 34 verse 18 because this is what separates a spiritual man from a carnal man a wicked man from a righteous man we deal with the same issues in the flesh the same infirmities in the flesh but when we deal with them 
the first thing we do, we're going to get that in Sirach the 38th chapter in a minute. But we understand that, hey, we're not going to abort a physician. The Most High ordained men with knowledge that can benefit us, even the so-called white man. You go into his medical industry, industry, hey, the medicine works. But it's the Most High that actually controls the issue of healing, life, death. So although the creature can be used to do beneficial things, even the wicked, we understand that it's the most high that ignites all healing. It all begins spiritually and it manifests carnally, even when it comes down to healing, right? This is Psalms chapter 34 and verse 17. It says, the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and delivereth them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such that be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Out of them all. That's why we call him the most high God, the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because whatever we're confronted with, it's not a time that the most high has left us or forsaken us. All of the, the conditions that the people that are round about deal with, we deal with them too. But what separates us is we have faith in the most high power. And we are going to remain in a broken and contrite spirit in the most high. He heals us. It's nothing to take lightly when you see the judgment falling down all around us. We understand that it's for us to be corrected and measured. We're mindful of the scourges. I brought that out in 2nd Edges, the 16th chapter. We're mindful of the scourges. So what happens whenever we're confronted, we, hey, we get broken down and we cry out to the Heavenly Father and He hears us and He comforts us through His Word, through the brotherhood, through the prayers of the righteous. And this is what we have to maintain. Stay locked into this Word, right? Romans 8 and 16, it is the Spirit that bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Everyone around us ain't a children, child of God. Why? When they're confronted with shit in this physical realm, their heart ain't to seek him first. They're not even fearful to acknowledge, damn, this is a judgment on me. For what I've done this life or the past life. Job 4 and 7. Who pairs being innocent? None of us are innocent. That's why in Luke 18 and 18, Yahweh Shah said, Why call of me good? There's none good but the Father. And he is good unto us. He's gracious unto us. He's merciful unto us. In spite of what we may perceive as him being upset with us, he loves us. And he does that by giving us our daily bread, by taking care of our families, by giving us traveling mercies, <coughs> by sending his son to us to re as, a, as a savior, to give redemption into his children. It says that in Acts 5 and 30, Luke 1 and 68. That's for us. Hebrews 8 and 8, the old covenant, it's and the new covenant. That's for us. Jeremiah 31, 31, that's for us. Even to see, like Revelation 13 and 9, right? Seeing our enemies being judged. That's to show that he loves us, right? Zephaniah, I believe it's 2 or 3 and 5, says, let me get it real quick. Because we're... We're the apple of the Most High's eye, and that hasn't changed. You know, we're the apple of the Most High's eye, that hasn't changed. He has not cast us away. In the nations round about, they will love to have it so. This is Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. For thus said the Lord of hosts, after the glory has sent unto me, the nations will spoil you. For he that toucheth you touches the apple of my eye. All right, so the Most High loves us and he loves us dearly. And this is why you have all of these different plagues being poured out. Right, let me get this in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Right, because even Paul, he had a thorn in his side. But he understood that, hey, he had the glory in his infirmities. This is 2 Corinthians. Brother Saul. Get this pre. All right. 
This is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And it reads, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in, this, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, for Yahweh Shai's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see what I'm saying? So this is Paul. He said he gloried in his infirmities, right? And he said he had a thorn in his side. He didn't say exactly what that thorn was, but hey, he actually had to bear his cross and he said he gloried in his infirmities, right? Let me bring this out in Ezekiel 9 and 4. Thank you all for y'all patience. Hey, because all of these judgments are gonna continue to roll out and as they roll out, Hey, just like in that time of Egypt, when that death angel was passing over, hey, there were certain people that had that mark above their door, that mark of exemption, that word tom in the in the uh, Hebrew, right? In the Greek, Salaki. Let me bring this out in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. And Lord willing, this has been edifying. Ezekiel 9 and 4 says, And the Lord said unto him, Go throughout the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and said a mark, and that word mark is the word tav, T-A-V, which means exempt from judgment, right? Upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So for us to come out and do this good work, hey, the Most High, it said, hey, we don't have nothing to fear those that are keeping the Lord's commandments, right? We can walk with a level of faith because we are doing what the Heavenly Father told us to do, Ezekiel 9 and 4. It says, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all of the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said, in my, he, in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near, near, near any man whom is the mark and began at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. Hey, 1 Peter 4 and 17. 1 Peter 4 and 17 lets you know judgment must begin at the house of God. Right, it said, let the judgment begin at the man before my house. But they are men that have that mark, just like in the days of the Passover, when that death angel was going throughout destroying the houses, those men that had that blood above their doorpost. Hey, Yahweh Shai Mashiach passed over. Right? And in this time as well, there are certain men that are exempt from judgment. Lord willing, we are those men, the hopeful elect. Right? We can be bold as lions. Why? Because we know that we are on the right side of judgment. We are being obedient to the commissions and the orders and the ordinances of the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See that? That set a mark above the forehead of the men that sigh and cry for all of the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Right? So let me bring this out real quick in Isaiah 64 and 4. And Lord willing, this has been edifying. Isaiah 62 and 6, we'll end with that. It's getting a little. Um, dark out so let me go ahead and break this up okay come this is isaiah chapter 62 verse 6 it says i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord keep not silent and give him no rest till he establish until he make jerusalem a praise in the earth hey so with that lord willingness has been edifying to those that are waning in faith Hey, get into this word. Get into the videos. Repent. That's what's most important, right? Because, hey, we are in the time of the Most High's visitation. And we want to have surety and confidence that, hey, the Most High is with us. Why? Because we are being obedient into his word, right? Let me bring this out in Sirach 38 and 9 as it pertains to these different pestilence or these different plagues. Sirach 38, it says, Honor a physician with the honor due unto him, for the uses which ye may have of him, 
for the Lord has created him. Those are your doctors, you know, Kaiser, Grady, your local hospital, your emergency clinics, your child's clinic. The Most High says, what do he say? Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which he may have of him. So if you need to go and get some, you know, medicine to lower your child's temperature, hey, go and use it so your child don't break out into a seizure. You know what I'm saying? If you got a headache and your fever is rising, take a Tylenol. You know, if you feel, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you feel like you need to seek, you know, medical attention, the scriptures tell you that you're more than within the confines of the tenets of the Bible to do so. But it says, use, it says, which he may have of him. So it's saying, give him the honor, do him for the uses which you may have of him. And hey, we have need of certain over-the-counter drugs and medicines in this time, right? So Rock 12 and 10 says, never trust your enemy. Who will pity a charmer bitten by a snake? So in this information age, you need to be prudent. You need to do research, right? It says in Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. A lot of people have a smartphone that's smarter than them. They don't go into their phone to try to find remedies that they can implement in the house. Like I said, they, they trust in the shadow of Egypt rather than trust in the Holy One of Israel. Hey, in the Most High, all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding flows from Him. Even the knowledge and the wisdom that they have that we can use to benefit us, right? Sirach 38 and 2 says, for if the Most High cometh healing, right? So even if they give you a drug, the Most High is the one that is the author and the finisher of if you actually get healed or not. Bring this out one more time, Sirach 38 and 2. For the Most High cometh healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head, and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration. You know, like your... Um, wish you the one black doctor that was, you know, known for separating Siamese twins at the school, being, being something, harming something, I don't know. But there are men that are in this society that have gotten renowned for their different advancements, their strides, their accomplishments in the medical industry, right? It says, for if the most high cometh healing and he shall receive honor of the king, the skill of the physician shall lift up his head and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth and he that is wise shall not abhor them. Now, for example, what I went through recently being under the weather for the lack of a better word, I got so much more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding on different teas, on different tinctures, on different herbs and medicines that I need to stock up in my medicine cabinet. Collodial, silver, you know, all type of honey. I mean, I'm stocked up now and I'm more prepared for the future being confronted with this, you know, recent illness. Not only has my immune system been fortified, but I've been fortified in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the herbs. You see what I'm saying? And before, you know what I'm saying, being in good health, it wasn't something that was paramount on, you know, a priority for me to really get into. But now I feel that like the Most High has increased me in the knowledge of his herbs, right? It says here in Sirach, 38 and 4, the Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise shall not abhor them. Was not the water made sweet with wood, and the virtue thereof might be known? And he hath given men skill. So Rock 38 and 6, it says, and he hath given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous work. So the men that have the skill that is a reflection of the most high power, giving them the wisdom, right? This is how they honor him. They even call it a Hippocratic oath that they won't cause any harm or anything like that, right? That's the whole little staff with the serpent going around it, right? But that's the most high giving them that wisdom to go out and heal people, to go into their bodies and heal different ailments and unctions and infirmities that they have, right? It says, was not the water made sweet with wood that the virtue thereof might be known and he hath given men skill that he might work 
that he might be honored in his marvelous works. With such doeth he heal men and taketh away their pains. Of such does the apothecary make a confection, and of his work there is no end. And from him is peace all o o over all earth. My son, in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, for he will make thee whole. Right King Asa didn't do this. In his sickness, he was negligent. Why? Because he didn't pray unto the Lord in 2 Chronicles, the 16th chapter, right? He went straight to the physicians of Assyria, right? It said, leave all from sin and order thine hands aright and cleanse thine heart from all wickedness, right? That's what Hezekiah did in 2 Kings 20. When Isaiah told him that he needed to prepare his house and that he was shortly going to die and his people were going to go in captivity, first thing he did was wept to the Holy One of Israel. Just like it says in Sirach 38 and 9. Let me bring this out one more time. My son in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord and he will make thee whole. That's exactly what happened to Hezekiah. His life was increased 15 years and that was 15 more years of peace for our people. It says, Sirach 38 and 11, it says, give a sweet savor and a memorial of fine flour and make fat offering as not being. Then give place to the physician, for the Lord hath created him. Let him not go from thee, for thou hast need of him. There is a time when in their hands there is good success, for they also pray unto the Lord that he would prosper that which they give for ease and remedy to prolong life. He that sinned before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. That's what happened with King Asa. He fell into the hand of the physician. Why? Because he trusted in the shadow of Assyria. He trusted not in the Holy One of Israel. All right? Hey, so with that, Lord willing, this was edifying. May the Lord Most High, you sincere brothers that are out there, laboring in truth, faith, and sincerity. May the Most High continue to protect you in your household as we go into these times of judgment. As it's written, all the plagues of Egypt are going to visit this place. So it's not time to lighten up. It's time to tighten up by getting into this word, by continuing to be of a contrite and broken spirit. Hey, double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that teach and rule well. Their value in this time is through the roof. Why? Because the Most High it's closing the doors of repentance, right? He's shutting the mouths of the prophets. People are going to be crying for wine in the street shortly to denote that, hey, that as in the days of Noah, them doors are going to be closed. I brought that out in Matthew 24 and 38 earlier. And, hey, we're going to end by giving all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rekakadash. Yahweh, that's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the most high God. And Yahweh Shah is the son that he sent to give us redemption, to give us salvation, to shortly crack the clouds with the heavenly host to set us as the praise of the earth. Hey, so with that, I want to end by giving our praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakan, Kadash, Ababa, Ba.